Diageo is the largest spirits maker in the world. The company behind brands like Johnny Walker, Smirnoff and Bailey's. Amid Europe's debt crisis and the struggling U.S. economy, the company is now zooming in on emerging markets. Today on Asia's Business, we speak to the president of Diageo Asia Pacific, Gilbert Gostin. Its latest interest, India's United Spirit, is agreed to pay $2 billion for a controlling stake to secure a foothold in the world's largest whiskey-consuming nation. Diageo already sells Johnny Walker whiskey and Spinoff vodka brands in India, is seeking growth in markets outside Europe as part of a plan to get half its sales from developing economies by 2015. Gilbert Gostein, welcome to Asia's Business. What a fantastic year it's been for Diageo and for yourself with all the acquisitions and excitement within the company. The latest being the acquisition in India. A $2 billion deal, 53% of United Spirits. A game changer? Definitely a game changer. United Spirits will be transformational for our business in emerging markets and transformational for our business in Asia and in India. United Spirits uh, has been a very successful company. They are the leading player in India uh, in spirits. The Indian market is a very attractive market. Here you're talking about 295 million cases of, uh, of local spirits, $6 billion uh, of total beverage alcohol, and the demographics are very favorable. And when we look at the data, you have uh, today 120 million consumers in emerging middle class. They will become 600 million in 2025. So the potential growth in India within spirits is uh, huge and USL have a leading position in this market. Here you're talking about the market leader with over 40% of market share. How do you tap the potential though? We have 19 million consumers coming into uh, drinking age every single year. A huge market to be tapped, but it has to be catered to the young. Well, le le well our definition of legal drinking age, or you could say legal purchase age, uh, yes, it's an opportunity. You have 19 million people coming into legal purchase age or legal drinking age every year in India, which is driven you know, by favorable demographics. And at the same time, you know, the big opportunity in India is about urbanization also. You have people moving you know, into cities and there are bigger opportunities to entertain within cities than in the countryside. Is there integration to be had here? to be done now that United Spirits has been acquired? Well, you know, we need, we should not jump the gun too quickly now. We are going through the uh, internal regulatory process and we expect that the mandatory tender offer uh, will be closed sometime at the end of quarter one, uh, 2013. And then, you know, we could look at the opportunities and how we can accelerate the growth of this great company. Why revisit India at this point in time? Because Diageo exited the Indian market during the financial, uh, during the crisis of 2002, why a rethinking of the market now? Well, we, we always acknowledge the potential of the Indian market. Uh, the Indian market is a Western type spirits uh, market. Uh, Johnny Walker and Smirnoff and VAT69 are you know, iconic brands in this market with a leadership position. The Scotch whiskey market has huge potential uh, in India and we always looked at opportunities within the Indian market. As you know, we have been you know, having conversations with, uh, with, uh, with USL, not not today, you know, we've started these discussions, you know, four or five years ago, and now was the right opportunity to close this transaction. It's a difficult market, though. We have uh, state-run liquor shops. We have uh, counterfeit liquor to be dealt with as well. It is a very difficult market to be to be doing business in. I think with complexity comes opportunity. Yes, you're right. You know, it is a challenging market, but this is where you know the upside is bigger. Uh, there is different formats in this market. You know, you have auction market, you have government states, and you have open states. And here you you're talking about you know India is you know as big as a continent with 28 different states and different regulations in each and every state. But I think the opportunity with USL US USL is very well established in this market. You know, they have 98% coverage of the market. And at the same time, they have over 80 
uh, uh, factories or distilling facilities across India, which gives them more nimbleness and agility in order to be able to tackle opportunities on the marketplace. India becomes your number two market after the U.S. now. Yes. Has it got the potential to overtake the U.S.? I think the potential is there. Uh, How soon can that happen? The, the, the Indian market is forecasted to grow at like 15% value terms, you know, over the next uh, five to 10 years. And I would say, you know, if we manage to, you know, grow the business in India, India has the potential to become the number one market in the Aju sometime, you know, in the next five to 10 years. United Spirits, part of United Breweries, associated, owned by a very famous Indian man, Vijay Malia. How exciting is it to be working with Vijay Malia, who's seen as the Richard Branson of India? Yeah, uh, Vijay is a very inspirational man. Uh, I, I was in India two weeks ago. I spent some time with him and with his leadership team. He has built an incredible war machine in this market. You know, very intuitional man, very inspirational man, and I have lots of respect and admiration for what he has built in USL. But take a look at the F1. United Brewery supports um, uh, Force India and uh, Diageo is behind McLaren. Will there be any conflict uh, at the next Grand Prix? I will not say, I will not say <laughs> conflict. I will say opportunities. You know, he had the same vision that we had. He recognized you know, the impact of the sport. You know, we, we use uh, our partnership with McLaren you know, to promote responsible drinking uh, through Johnny Walker and through you know, our connection with, with McLaren. And he, he uses Force, uh, Force India in order to promote the USL leading brand in this market. You know, USL has 22 millionaire brands in India, you know, brands selling over a million cases in this market. Gilbert, share with us your aspirations for the Indian market, what you would like to achieve in the next five years. I would say the three key priorities for us will be the following. The first one is operate in a compliant way, you know, compliance, governance, control, and the highest international standards of compliance, governance, and controls are critical. This will be priority number one. Priority number two is you know, to gain market share you know, and keep improving uh, USL leadership position in this market. And the opportunity number three is to keep premiumizing the USL portfolio. And this is what the leadership team in USL have done exceptionally well over the last two years. And you know, we want to accelerate this journey with the USL leadership team. Jill Bagostin will live it there for the moment. We're going for a short break. Asia's business will be right back. Stay with us. Diageo says Asia-Pacific is a tale of two halves. India is one, China the other. Sales in the country have surged 40% year-on-year for the past eight quarters. And the momentum is building. The company continues to invest more in its quality brands, targeting celebrities and the super rich. Okay, we're more and more. It recently opened a second Johnny Walker house in China boasting a bar, a museum shop and exclusive members club. But amid talk of slowing growth, is Diageo as confident about its business there? Luxury companies like Burberry, for instance, are having difficulty selling their trench coats. Is it any different for your industry operating in China? Haslinda, your question on China could not be more appropriate because I just came back uh, two days ago from China. I was in Beijing and we opened in Beijing the biggest luxury embassy in the world for Scotch whiskey. And this is you know, what Johnny Walker has opened in Beijing. Here we're talking about 1,500 square meters of uh, space to immerse consumers with the art of blending Scotch whiskey. Uh, Why is that important? It is important because Chinese are keen to engage with brands that have real substance, real heritage, real history, real provenance, real craftsmanship. And this is la la what brands like Johnny Walker, who has been established in 1820, so almost 200 years ago, can offer. 
And uh, this is what we offer through the Johnny Walker House. We offer through the Johnny Walker House limited editions that not, are not available on the marketplace, bespoke blends that you know, consumers could create themselves, and access to rare whiskies that are not available on the marketplace. So are you saying that exclusivity is the way to go to get the uber-rich Chinese to part with their money? I, I, I say... Rich Chinese individuals would like experiences and not only products. Because, you know, they, their money, they can afford to buy the products. But they are interested also in the experience, not only with the product. And, you know, through the Johnny Walker House in Beijing, you know, we also have a concierge service that can organize for them, you know, visits to Scotland and help them understand more about what this industry and this brand can offer. There's been a lot of concern about a slowing Chinese economy. What kind of growth projections is Diageo making? I looked at our business, I reviewed our business, you know, our growth is still strong in China, stronger on the super deluxe and the luxury side than on the mainstream. Uh, I'm optimistic about reporting a double digit uh, top line growth in China, and I'm optimistic about our uh, Double digit would brands. be 20, 30? I, I would say, you know, mid-teens. Uh, or you know high teens uh, performance uh, in China uh, in uh, in 2012 and in you know, our first half results and at the same time you know the super deluxe end uh, of our portfolio is growing at 50 60 percent whiskey often seen as an old man's drink you're trying to change that well you know whiskey I think the opportunity with whiskey you know whiskey transcends all social classes you know whiskey uh, overcomes gender so it's female it's male and it's it can be you know people that are in their 50s and it can also be uh, people that are in their 30s and the opportunity for us in china is not only in whiskey and in johnny walker baileys has been very successful for us in china especially you know targeting uh, female consumers the tests that we have done you know over the last few years with baileys has proved to be very promising the baileys brand has grown at 50 percent over the last two years we will hit a hundred thousand cases of baileys this year in China and I'm optimistic about the potential of this brand in this market. How about the potential for further acquisitions in China? Well, as you know we are the only uh, global international spirits company that operates in Baijiu in local spirits at scale and also in international spirits. We are uh, very pleased with our participation uh, in Baijiu through Swaging Fund and we will look at opportunities in the future to broaden this platform within Baijiu and within premium you too. You're also looking at other emerging markets, the likes of Vietnam and possibly Indonesia. What's the potential you see in those markets? Well, there is potential in these markets. Uh, we are uh, in Vietnam. We are operating in Vietnam. We were the first international company to have a license to operate in Vietnam. At the same time, you know, we managed to uh, acquire over 45% of the premium uh, local spirits company Halico uh, this year too. And going forward, how will that contribute to your numbers? Well, going forward, Vietnam, as you know, is a market that has 90 million consumers, a very young profile. You know, the median age in Vietnam, you know, is, uh, is 28 years. And uh, the demographics are also very favorable. And we're optimistic about the potential of the Vietnamese market on the imported spirit side, predominantly with Scotch whiskey and with Johnny Walker being a flagship brand for us in this market. And also through the route to market uh, of Halico with, uh, with Halico Vodka. On the issue of uh, acquisitions, there are recent reports suggesting that perhaps Yajio may be tying up with Santori to make a bid for being is there truth in that? Well, as you know, we, we never comment on uh, future acquisition targets, and I won't be able would, to Would there be interest to make a bid for BEAM? Well, we will not comment on this one. Okay. What challenges do you think Diageo faces in maintaining its position as the biggest spirits maker in the world? Well, I think for us what will be critical is you know keep growing our brands organically and the acquisitions that we have generated over the last uh, two years make sure that you know these acquisitions deliver against the aspiration and the ambition that we have for these markets and keep making an impact in the community in which we operate. Jill Bagostin, hang tight. 
Asia's business. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Diageo is looking beyond its industry to make an impact. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It recently announced Plan W, a strategy to empower 2 million women in 17 Asia-Pacific countries. It's committing $10 million over the next five years to educate, train and develop the technical skills of women through projects from Nepal to Sri Lanka, Vietnam to China and Korea. According to Diageo Asia-Pacific President Gilbert Gostin, women and gender diversity have been critical in the company's own success. W means women and uh, we are very excited about Plan W. Diageo today uh, is committed to invest 10 million US dollars to empower women in 17 countries across Asia-Pacific by 2017 and empowering two million women by 2017. And there are lots of social causes to fight for. Why women? We, for instance, have about a billion people living under the poverty line. Well, women are very important in today's economy. One billion women will enter you know, the global economy and the workforce in the next decade. And two thirds of the people who work in the hospitality industry that is very important for us are women. It's easy to talk about women's causes and to fight for women's causes at a company level, but how is that reflected in the company's own DNA? How is it like at Diageo? In Diageo, we embrace diversity and we are very proud about diversity. And at the same time, we received lots of awards and recognition for our efforts on this front. We are very proud that in Diageo, 40% of our board directors are women. And we received a great acknowledgement of this one last year. Last year in 2011, you know, we were voted as the number one company, uh, FTSE company in the UK with uh, female board representation. With this commitment to empowering women, what exactly will be done? What are the projects that will be initiated? Plan W touches four different uh, segments, or we call them four key pillars. You know, the first one is our company, the second one our industry, the third one our communities, and the fourth one is our consumers. Let me talk about each one of them at a turn. Starting with our company, uh, although we have 40% representation of women on our board, in the leadership position in the company, 27% of our leaders across the board are women, and we aim you know, to raise this to 30% by 2014. When I look at my business in Asia Pacific, only 22% of my leadership positions are filled by women, and I am committed to take it to 30% in two years' time by 2014. When I look at our industry, you know, we are committed to empower women within our industry, which means, you know, help them, you know, grow their skills, their competence, their capability, and increase their employability within the hospitality and the food and beverage industry. We have trained 20,000 bartenders across Asia Pacific over the last two years, and you know, we are committed to train 50,000 bartenders across Asia Pacific over the next three years. When I look at the communities, in the communities, we have started you know, lots of initiatives to empower women uh, through training and learning uh, over the last two years. We want to take this to the next level and our target is to start in South Asia, in Nepal, in Sri Lanka and in India over the next few months. It is a male-dominated industry. Can you change that mindset, that stereotype? We are changing uh, this, uh, this mindset. You know, we have started this journey in Diageo. We are very proud about the, our diversity standards in Diageo. In Diageo, it's the, uh, hiring and promotions are driven by, uh, by meritocracy. But at the same time, you know, when I look at my uh, employment base here in Asia Pacific and globally, 40% of our colleagues and our employee base in Asia Pacific and in the world are female. Trans Translate that in terms of how the company benefits in having women in higher positions. Well, the perspective they bring 
uh, is different. Uh, you know, women are committed, women are meticulous, and women show a different type of leadership where, you know, they operate within the standards of compliance and controls, and the perspective they bring on leadership and on solution uh, is, is very different. And women are great team players, and they keep helping the team and the organization move forward. You've been in the business for a very long time, for almost two decades now. People 19 think years. <laughs> to be exact. Uh, what are the challenges within the industry? People only see the fun side of it. Well, I would say the industry has changed a lot over the last 20 years, you know, since I joined uh, this industry and this company, actually. I've been with Diageo uh, for the last 19 years. I think what is great about Diageo, in Diageo, it is not only a company that is doing well, Diageo is committed to do good too, and this is what we are doing through our community contribution, you know, for example, with Plan W, at the same time, in, in the way we embrace and drive responsible consumption of alcohol everywhere in the world. So in Diageo, we don't want to sell more, we want to sell better. We don't want consumers to consume more, we want them to consume better. You're behind two of the biggest acquisitions that the company has made in Asia. How difficult has it been? Because the two markets, are India and China, seem to be very challenging markets. We are very proud of our achievement in Asia Pacific. It is definitely a teamwork. Uh, in Asia Pacific we succeeded organically and inorganically. We have been growing our core brands and our core portfolio. Diageo, we have 31% market share in international spirits in Asia Pacific and we are the leading player. At the same time, you know, the two landmark transactions that we have achieved in India, which Weijing Fung, and in, uh, sorry, in China, which Weijing Fung, and in India with USL, are transactions that will make us feel very proud and will definitely transform our participation in premium local spirits too. How do you personally feel about it? I feel very proud of what we have achieved as a team, and I think the biggest learning for us is patience, respect, and perseverance. Joe Bagostin, thank you so much for being with us on Asia's Business. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure was mine. Thank, Thank you, Aslinda.